<sighs> Welcome, I am John Halcyon Stin, and this is the Belief Buffet. This is a part of Hug Nation. It is a weekly download, brainstorm, lesson, whatever I am learning and going through this week and sharing it and my journey in hopes that it resonates and is helpful to you in your journey. Speaking of sharing our journeys, Hug Nation also includes a morning love ambassador morning broadcast, 9 a.m. every day on Facebook, and a gratitude circle throughout the day at noon, 6 p.m. and 3 in the morning in zoom.hugnation.com if you want to join me for any of those. I actually usually are there for noon and 6, not 3 in the morning, but beautiful, open-hearted, like-minded people are there at each time to share gratitude, connect, remind ourselves that we're more alike than we are different, and that this human experience is so much more beautiful and rewarding and there's so much more to learn when we can do so in community and together and share our experiences, our journeys. So thank you for being a part of this experience of shared journeys. And with that, I think I will begin the topic of the day, the belief buffet dish. And belief buffet meaning it is set out in front of you, nibble on it, have a bite if you like, if it resonates, keep chewing and swallow. If not, spit it out. So, <sighs> welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is the Belief Buffet, a part of Hug Nation. And today, I want to address a question I was asked last night with how do you deal with anger and despair? Because sometimes the state of the world and current events and circumstances are such that it is so difficult, if not impossible, to avoid being overwhelmed, to avoid feeling enraged, to avoid that those feelings. And there's nothing wrong with those feelings. Being a human being, having the human experience is about not just hedonism and bliss. It's also about struggle and suffering and dark nights of the soul and so that you have the opportunities to learn and grow and be challenged. You, know, you don't go to a gym and say, oh no, look at all these heavy things. These are going to hurt me if I try to lift them. No, you say, oh cool, a bunch of heavy things that as I practice lifting them, I will get stronger. And the goal is not to rid the gym of weight. The goal is, the goal is to get stronger using the challenges in the gym as your tools, as your classroom. And so that's part of what I do to deal with anger and despair is to recognize that this is part of the human experience. Sometimes I can say, oh man, I am humaning hard right now. Or I'm in a graduate level human class right now. And another tool that I have been using lately is in trying to pull back and view the timeline from a much farther away position. So instead of looking at what's going on in the news or current events in, and what is going to happen next or what may happen next, instead look at humanity beyond my lifetime, knowing that there are going to be cycles, there are going to be points of triumph and evolution, there are going to be times when we take steps backwards. And I say that with this confidence and yes, that's what I do. But let me confess that many times over the last few years, I have lost track of that and felt so overwhelmed and so pessimistic. So this is one of the tools I get or use to pull myself out, which is that, wait a minute. Life will go on in most situations. So... And sometimes the dark times are what bring things to light. Sometimes the struggles and the challenges are what pushes people from comfort into discomfort, which pushes people into action. You know, no massive social change happens without struggle and discomfort. So I've mentioned this before, but there's a book that I read uh, last year, Three Body Problem. 
science fiction book by a Chinese author recommended by Barack Obama. And it, the, the science fiction concept is such that they are as a, the, the world needs to work together towards solving problems that for a situation that is going to happen 1,500 years in the future when another alien race arrives at the U.S. And so this idea of thinking about the timeline of humanity, not from what is going to happen next week or next year or next election cycle, but what is potentially going to happen after rise and falls of many civilizations and the massive technological and spiritual evolution that could happen in this long enough timeline and and perhaps collapsing and you know back to square one but but the 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 thing that that gives me hope and helps me to recalibrate is thinking the truly significant things to put your efforts towards are not well, I won't say are not. This is all important, but political, technological, those are all important. But what lasts is integrity, values, love. And that when civilization is, civilization is collapsed, those that are finding their way from their caves, if they have been touched by the ripples of kindness and love, then those traits can continue on. Those are inherited through cultural um, storytelling and raising one another. And those last in ways that I think it, it can bring value and purpose to your life, even if you do not have confidence in the state of current events or the political climate you can still feel like it matters to be good. It matters to be kind. It matters to live in integrity and it matters to pursue your authentic self. And maybe through that pursuit of... I'm gonna hope that that is an accidental honk and not someone who's just being obnoxious. <laughs> Speaking of anger um wow i mean that makes that that makes me angry like did someone really feel like that was the way that they could problem solve Whew. but that's just this immediate situation so i will snap back into this thought of long term and this thought that this aspect of my faith that believes that if we are to find the solutions to these patterns and trends that can be frustrating or pessimistic about the environment or culture or oppression or um, corruption, that if we are going to find routes of healing, they are going to not come from what is taught in school. It is not going to come from how we are raised. It is going to come from something deep down inside, divinely called forth and those things will only come out if we create these communities and these cultures and these support networks that support and, and, and celebrate the courage to be open to those interior inspirations. And so it's almost like that route, that path is not one that we can actually logically understand. We just have to surrender and have faith and can keep going step by step, day by day trying to find tiny ways that we can be kind, trying to find ways that we can be courageous, ways that we can encourage others to be kind and courageous and generous and open-hearted and loving. And that knowing that, you know what, in a massive cosmic timeline, in a, in a spiritual timeline that transcends this reality and this dimension, that our objective maybe is not to fix everything. Our objective is to play the game as best we can, to use this classroom to evolve our personal spirit. And from that perspective, sometimes I can get past the anger and the despair 
and go back to that place of gratitude. Gratitude for this life. Gratitude for this ability to be alive and experience things and connect with you and feel love and inspiration as well as all the struggles and darkness. So thank you for being a part of this beautiful journey and letting me share mine. I love you.